35 Remington cartridge. It's a great hunting cartridge for deer, hogs, black bear, that sort of thing. You can also download it and use 357 diameter jacketed pistol bullets like a 158 grain jacketed hollow point or something like that or even some oh, cast pistol bullets although it has a little problem that uh, I'll get into a little further later on but uh, that is the classic loading of the 35 Remington it's not actually a factory load but it's pretty much a duplicate of the factory load of the classic factory load it's a uh, Remington case and a Remington core locked 200 grain round nose bullet at around 2,000 feet per second, give or take 100 feet per second. And that is the load that the round built its reputation on. I've got it loaded over, I'm not sure how much, but uh, I would have to look in one of my books. But either IMR 4064 or more likely IMR 4895 something in the the medium burning speed range and uh, that's a great round you can't can't find that load anymore in fact actually I have never fired a factory load through this rifle but I'm going to today I guess this is my 1982 manufactured model 336 Marlin and when I bought it about 10 years ago I never bought any ammo for it but I bought a set of loading dies and I bought of course I already had some 35 caliber pistol bullet molds and I bought some of the Remington 200 grain core locked bullets as reloading components and loaded those and I just I picked up a, a few rounds of brass occasionally from various ranges and stuff that I found just scattered around on the ground you know three pieces here five pieces there and so on but over the past few years I have found it difficult to find brass actually impossible to find brass I've well maybe three years ago I saw a bag of brass at uh, Gander Mountain I believe it was and it was a little bit high priced so I didn't buy it but I should have because it wasn't terrible it wasn't as bad as you know having to buy factory ammo to get the brass which is why I bought this because I, I started thinking back in the spring that maybe I would deer hunt with this rifle this year and so I started looking around trying to find some brass. Couldn't find any. And I've only even been, been able to find one kind of ammo for it. And so I bought that. It was about $27, $28. And that's the Hornady Lever Evolution. Which everybody raves about. But... I don't see where it offers any advantages at all. Yeah, it might increase the range a little bit, but you know, if I'm going to be shooting at 200 plus yards, I'm going to use a 30 out 6 anyway, or my trusty 7mm, 7x57, 7mm Mauser. That's what I'll actually use. But uh, 30 out 6 would work too. But I basically bought this for the brass because I could not find any brass for loading it. And I've read some comments online on forums and such that some people claim that, uh, that you can resize 308 brass, trim it and resize it and make it work in 35 Remington. And I've even seen at least one guy claim that he has actually done it. Well, all I can say is that if he actually did that, he has a very oversized chamber because the base of 308 brass and 30 alt 6 and all 
those standard cartridges is 13 thousandths of an inch larger than the 35 Remington. It's not the same size. If you hold it, let's see, let me grab a 308. There's a 308. Of course, you can see the 308 case is a little bit longer, not an insane amount longer. You know, it would be easy to trim that off. If you hold them base to base, it doesn't look like all that much difference. But here's the problem. And I tried this back shortly after I first bought this rifle because I wanted to see if it would work. But, uh, ignore the torn off case mouth because uh, I didn't anneal it and I didn't trim it. But look at the base. If you try to size that down to 35 Remington size, it leaves you with a, a belt because, you know, the head is solid brass. It's not going to size down. And it might be possible to chuck that in a lathe and cut it down enough to fit. Actually, it is possible. But uh, I would only want to use that for very light loads, if at all. But in my rifle, at least, There's no way that's going to close. Now, some comments about the cartridge. It's a it's unusual to me, or it's it's surprising, I should say, that it's so difficult to find brass and to find loaded ammo, except for the Hornady. Now, this stuff is no problem to find. It's generally in stock, and. Uh, you know, that's a good thing because it's the only thing you can find. But, uh, it's kind of, uh, the cartridge is kind of what you would call a cult classic or a cult favorite because a lot of people love the cartridge. I've heard that it's very popular in Maine for deer and bear hunting and elsewhere in uh, New England, but especially in Maine. But, uh, you know, with all that, it seems like it would be easier to find the ammo. It seems like the ammo would be everywhere. But it's not. So, you know, if I had, let's, and I was going to say, uh, you know, I can imagine some Mad Max type character in a post-apocalyptic movie having a, uh, a rat rodish looking mare's leg based on a Marlin 336 and thumbing 35 Remington rounds into it. You know, it just seems like that sort of cartridge. But uh, let's say if we were in a post apocalyptic world and I've got an extra 22 rifle and I run across a guy that has a, uh, a Marlin 336. I don't know where it cut off, but it cut off at some point. So let's say I'm in a post-apocalyptic situation and all I've got is a Marlin 336 and 35 Remington and five rounds of ammo. And I've got loading dies and, you know, bullet mold and so on. So I could take my Dremel and, uh, you know, make a propeller to fit this if I didn't have a solar panel. And uh, use this as a, a wind generator to generate electricity for my Dremel. And take something like a sanding drum. That's too large. but uh, So that wouldn't work. That particular one. But I could get a... Well, actually, I have a... I have a little carbide burr for my Dremel. So, basically, I would just cut the, the back end of the chamber enough so that a resized 308 case would go in there. Wouldn't take much. And that way I would be able to use 
308 brass. But uh, really the best thing to do with one of these, in my opinion, would be to get a 358 Winchester reamer. And uh, I've heard of people doing this. I've read quite a bit about people doing this, in fact. And uh, on a, a forum, which, you know, certainly not all forums have have members that have a clue what they're talking about. I could name, I won't, but I could name several forums where the members generally have no clue. But there are a few of them where the members really know what they're talking about. And, uh, and on one of them I read a, a pretty extensive thread about reaming out 35 Remington 336s to 358 Winchester, which is a 308 opened up to 35 caliber, and also reaming 3030 model 336s to 308 or 307, which is a rimmed 308. Now, you don't want to shoot full powered ammo in that, but because of the greater case volume, you can get a little bit better performance than. Actually, you could probably get quite a bit better performance than a 3030 while staying within pressure constraints. But the main advantage of reaming, to three, reaming this to 358 Winchester and never firing any factory ammo through it, but just using that as a means of making brass, the main advantage is that then you can make brass from 308 Winchester. Another advantage is that with the, and here's what I mentioned that I was going to, that it doesn't work well with some cast bullets. Now the reason it doesn't is because in the Marlin 336 chambered in 35 Remington, the rifling begins right at the case mouth. So a lot of cast bullets won't chamber in it because they're too large right there, you know, right where it comes out of the case. So, you've got to, uh, you've got to choose your cast bullets carefully. And, uh, and you've got to seat them carefully so that they will chamber. And 358 Winchester is not like that. 358 Winchester usually has a chamber that has a, a forcing cone or lead, as the, the proper terminology is in front of the case mouth and that will work with just about any cast bullet. So that would be better plus it has a, a longer neck which is good for cast bullets. But uh, some cast bullets do work well with the 35 Remington. And in fact I was reading just a little while ago in my Lyman Cast Bullet Handbook 3rd Edition and there it is, the 35 Remington. And uh, in fact, I was looking, I looked up some loads, uh, various loads for jacketed bullets and cast bullets online on one of the popular sites. And I saw where there was a 158 grain lead semi wug cutter listed with a load of five grains of red dot and it said be careful not to overcharge and I literally laughed out loud because even if you did double charge with a five grain of red dot charge that gives you ten grains of red dot which is still not a maximum load. See here's a 195 grain 358430 which I mentioned that one because that's one of the molds that I have. That's a good mold for it. And it lists as maximum load with red dot 11 grains at 1495 feet per second. And that sounds like it will be a good load. And uh, that would be good enough for deer. And you know, most of the things within close range, most of the things that a 35 Remington is good for, as well as small game. And uh, that would be a good survival load. And with the 1 in 16 twist that uh, these rifles have, that should work pretty well. 
without leading, you know, as long as you use a good lube. So, the 35 Remington is also good for varmint hunting and so, so on like that. If you use, I think I mentioned this already, but 158 grain jacketed hollow points intended for the 357 Magnum and you use something like 2400 or 4227 powder and uh, load it up to maybe 1600 picosecond which will be a light load in 35 Remington actually it wouldn't be that heavy of a load even in a 357 Magnum rifle but uh, at that velocity the 158 grain jacketed hollow point should still perform well because that's still within the the design const constraints of that bullet. So with that, let's go fire some of the first jacketed low. I mean, first factory loads I've ever fired in the in this rifle in the ten years that I've owned it. Okay, this is certainly not the first factory ammo that's ever been fired in this rifle, but it is the first factory ammo I've ever fired in it. And it's the Hornady Lever Evolution. Hopefully it'll work just about the same as the standard old Remington 200 grain load does. Remington core locked which I've never actually fired a factory one of those either but I've fired those bullets loaded to approximately factory velocities okay at chambers I read on the midway site one guy claimed that uh, this ammo wouldn't chamber in his rifle but it chambers fine so I've got a gallon jug of water out there at 50 yards. Let's see. See if we can hit it. See if I still have it in the viewfinder. Yep, there it is. Okay. Eyes and ears. where I'm heading. Maybe to the right. There it is. So I finally got on target with it, and since I was firing offhand, I probably wouldn't be firing offhand at 50 yards hunting. I'll be in the stand that's right behind the camera here. So that should work. But I held slightly to the left. I, I noticed it seemed like I was hitting to the right a bit. So I held very slightly to the left and hit it. Let's fire a few more rounds. Let you actually see the rifle as it fires. Yeah, 
that'll work.